Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to worship service. So, Father God in heaven, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I shall we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us salvation. Thank you for giving us wisdom and understanding so that we may know you, who you are, what you are. Yes, Lord. That's why we are here, to worship you today, in spirit and in truth. In the midst of presence of Holy Spirit, please speak to each of them, one us, and so that we may hear the voice of the Lord, and so that we may have the more faith in you to overcome by the power of the wicked world. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, before we hear the sermon, I want to read Psalms 17, verse 1 through 15. It is a prayer of King David. Okay, let's meditate, okay? What kind of prayer King David submitted to the Lord? And also examine what kind of prayer we are giving to our Lord daily basis, okay? Yeah, let me read it for you. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer, and go not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast approved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of man, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, then my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou, that mayest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against him, against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak Probably. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion looking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From man which at thy hand, O Lord, from man of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy heat treasure, they are full of children, and Rip the last of their, rest of their substance to their babies. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Yeah. His prayer is ending, you know. 
you want to be like Jesus, okay, to come. That means when Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected, he has hope to come out of grave to be raptured, just like us, you know, in the future. Then he wants to be exactly the same as Jesus Christ. Yeah, that is his only wishes, okay? Yeah. That's why King David was really, really accepted by Lord God. All right. Yeah, the main passage given to us today is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 13. I'll read it for you, okay? For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in there, in this we groan, honestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. Then mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the honest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, the whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to the he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have some what to answer them with glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Amen. Do you understand what it means? Apostle Paul spoke unto the saints of the Corinthian church. He said, for, they, for whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Now, today's subject of message is what? What are we beside ourselves to? What the meaning of beside ourselves? You know the you know the word set aside, right? For something very important, your life, right? Everything you're supposed to set aside, right? To follow, to achieve what you think is you know most important thing in your life is beside ourselves. What are we beside ourselves? To God or to something else? or somebody else. Think about that. 
Beside means not not doesn't mean you're mad or crazy, okay, insane. It it's different from that. All right? Then why Apostle Paul testified he is beside to God? We'd better meditate why he was beside himself to God. Before he saw Jesus Christ, he had been beside to killing the children of God because they believe in Jesus. But now he is beside himself to God, that is Jesus Christ. That is no more beside himself to murdering the children of God. He became to suffer for them and rather be ministered to them. Yeah, he changed he's changed your whole totally changed it. All right. Of the reason why he had been changed was because of the faith in the hope given by God, as much as he was to be beside himself to God. He became to look forward the hope in the kingdom of God, no more to the visible world. He wrote a letter and unto Hebrews. He said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah, that's the faith. Two, two things should be, you know, satisfied. First one, you have to believe God exists. And secondly, he will reward unto you when you seek him honestly, all your heart. Yes. Now we can guess, okay, Apostle Paul must be beside himself to the reward, right? To the reward. Yeah, let's continue to hear, okay? When we testified of a man of faith, we, he used the Enoch as a sample of them. Enoch is the sample of the Christian they shall be translated, raptured, without seeing death. When the Lord Jesus Christ appear in the air to take his bride, that is, you know, church of God, there is his church home in heaven. The Bible says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. Yeah, he believed the existence of God, and so he, he believed the, in a reward from God, okay? The man of God, Moses, testified also of Enoch, Enoch, long time ago, he said, and Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begot Muthusela. And Enoch worked with God after he begat Muthusela three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch worked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He will rapture. He will rapture. You know, he had the faith, okay? He going to be raptured without seeing death. Yes. I bless all of you also to have such kind of faith because it's a strong possibility. That is what? Jesus coming when we are alive, all right? I have that faith, and you must have that faith too. You are younger than I, right? The name Muthusela means there's something great to come 
in the future. It was related to the great flood in the day of Noah. After he died, right? The great flood came to the earth in the day of Noah. Enoch was translated, raptured after he begat Methuselah and worked with God for 300 years before the flood came to the earth. This is a shadow of the church of God to be translated, raptured to heaven before the great tribulation to come in the earth. The flood at the time of Noah is kind of shadow of the great tribulation to come sooner or later. As another example, the Lord God sent his angels to take out Lot right before he judged Sodom with fire. Therefore, God will translate his church, the body of Christ. We are the members, body of Christ, right? The church means we, not abandoning in the wicked world before the great tribulation. That is the judgment of God. In the main passage that we read already, Apostle Paul testifies of the hope before us with joy. The earthly house of this tabernacle shall be falling down when we give up on breath, when he die, right? Except as the house that is made of dust. Yes, our body is made of dust. Mixed with water, right? He testifies our flesh is the house of our soul. Yeah, our soul living in the body. It's an awful tabernacle. And we are going to put off sooner or later. He testifies our Lord Jesus Christ will translate to our eternal house in heavens when he appear in the air in near future to take us home. At the time, Apostle Paul and his brothers and sisters in the Lord must have believed that the Lord Jesus was going to appear to take them home when they were alive. They must have been able to overcome all kinds of afflictions through the substance from their faith of what they hope for, that they shall be in a rapture when they are alive. Apostle Paul testifies of their faith in the main passage, he said, right? Listen carefully. For we that are in this tabernacle, the ground being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that, whilst we are at home in the body, that means we are alive, we are absent from the Lord. That means we are physically far away from the Lord in heaven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, when Jesus spoke before he raised, he, was, he raised Lazarus from death. He implied two kinds of resurrection of a Christian. Someone after they die, the other ones before they die, being alive. Jesus asked Martha, the sister of Lazarus, after he spoke unto her. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Martha answered Jesus, you know, Jesus and said, Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ and Son of a God which should come into the world. But afterwards, you know, when she went to the graves of Lazarus, you know, she spoke unto the Lord, forsaking her faith at the moment. She said, Lord, by this time, he stinketh 
for he hath been dead four days. Yeah. After three days, you know, the body of man just began to be corrupted. It stinks, okay? It stinks. Finally, then Jesus spoke unto her again and said to her, Say I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. What is the glory of God? Resurrection. Eternal life. Finally, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth from the grave, you know, bound hand and foot with the grave clothes, and he, his face was bound about with a napkin. Even now, Lord Jesus is asking all of us, believe you this? Believe you this? Even after we die in the grave, if Jesus appear in the air, come forth, calling your name. You believe you shall be, you shall be resurrected. Apostle Paul was always confident because believing in this. As the body of Lazarus stinks, even our body is also getting old, being corrupted, gradually smelling stink. Yeah, the old man and woman, you know, stink, you know that? Your children, I believe you may have, you know, smell the stinks from old men and women, right? Yeah, that's why old men and women try to, you know, apply kind of perfume on their body, right? Yeah, that's because. Therefore, Lord Jesus is still speaking unto us. If you, thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God. Apostle Paul was always confident because of the Holy Ghost with, within him. He testified of the Holy Ghost as the honest of the Spirit. Honest means in a deposit of money, okay, kind of thing. In other words, he testified of the Holy Ghost as the honest money or deposit to buy house before the house is built. This is the reason why he was willing rather to be absent from the body to be in the house in heaven. In other words, he wanted to die to go to heaven, but he was looking for the benefit for other Christians. Without him, nobody can teach the words of God, right? Now seeking him to have others to be saved. Yeah, he want to save others. That's right. Even though he want to be out of his body, he want to die to see the Lord right away. But the reason he was in his still body alive in tribulation because he want to have other people to be saved. Same thing. The reason we're still alive is only that thing. You study at school, you can get a job after school, you earn money, what? Why all these things? To have somebody else be saved, okay? Can you be beside yourself to doing that kind of mission? Now try to, you know, question unto you individually. He encouraged the saints that have faith to live with the Lord in heaven to please God during the life in the earth. For they must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body during the life in this world. According to that, he has done. Whether it is good or bad, this is the reason why the children of God Fear the Lord in the hope of translation to heaven. He encouraged unto the saints of Philippians, he said unto them, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always 
obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That means if you are saved, you have to walk out, right? So that you may be able to get a lot of reward from the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ, you know, after we're raptured, we're going to stand. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But somebody that believes in Jesus, they're going to stand before, you know, white throne, judgment seat of white throne of God because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. But that we are not. And he continues to say, well, it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes. The reason God is in you if you're saved, right? The reason is to have you to do something of his good pleasure. Are you doing something God so pleased? Examine ourselves. King David also confessed of the hope of resurrection by faith. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Yeah. When Apostle Paul confessed, saying, for whether we beside ourselves, it is to God. That means, you know, during his life, first priority of his life is what? To do the work of the Lord. To do the work of the Lord, always put him beside. Okay? To submit, present his body as, you know, instrument of righteousness. To do his will not his will, to the will of God. That's why he encourages us now to have our life in the earth, to be all in to God before we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah. But go to school, right. And you can get a job to earn money. Yes. You can marry the future. All the reason of doing that is what? To beside yourself to God. Whether we eat, drink, we have to do for the glory of God. The reason we want to be healthy is the glory of God, to do the work of the Lord. Not satisfy your lust, right? It's very important. You do the same thing. Even the two men do the same thing, okay? But whether somebody beside himself to God or somebody else beside himself to himself. Totally different. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He can ask us beside ourselves to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us message. We want to examine ourselves. And so we want to understand your words. Give us understanding, and so that we may be able to behave ourselves to please the Lord, because you die for our sins when we are sinners. Nobody can die for us. Nobody can give us eternal life without any condition, just because we believe in him. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, everybody say, amen.